Okay, guys. So here I'm back talking with uh, about the scrum patterns. This is the second video. In the first video, I presented the stable teams. Yesterday's weather, um, one piece continuous flow. Now, so swarming, and illegitimate non interrupters. In this in this video, I want to show you guys uh, three more patterns to help you kickstart your project with Scrum. The third pattern. So the first pattern of this video is called housekeeping. Jeff Sutherland gives a, a different name for it. Uh, I think he calls it daily clean code, right? The idea of housekeeping is, so let me add my twang here. Let, let me add my experience to this pattern. Uh, it's applying 5S, all right? 5S is, is a method, it's a concept methodology f, uh, directly from lean manufacturing. And the idea is you apply Sadie, Seiton, Seizo, Seikatsu, Shitsuke, meaning sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. In practice, for you as a Scrum Master, this means clean up your workspace, make sure you establish where your Kanban board is going to be, right? how many Kanban boards you're going to have, what type of boards you're going to have, all right? Set the stage for the team to start working, all right? So where are you going to have an information radiator? What type of information radiators are you going to have, right? And establish that, and so that's the workspace. Now we have the other part of 5S in the daily life of a Scrum Master, which is what's the software engineering process that your company is using, that your team is using, right? So a very common mistake. I don't know why over time people just forgot about software engineering, right? Um, I know that software developing software is not pure engineering, we have some engineering aspects for on it. We also have some art aspects on it, right? Like creativity. We have reuse of software. That's some of the engineering aspects in it. So what you got to do is, what are the steps that we need to follow given our skills? Remember, your team is, is cross-functional, right? So who's going to be doing what? It doesn't have to be analysis, design, implementation, testing, the traditional SDLC, especially if you are using BDD, TDD, right? Or, uh, by the way, you should be using it, okay? So, you need to be able to understand that having a clear software development process uh, helps reduce problems, helps to increase the quality of the project, helps to increase the quality of the product being constructed, right? And helps the team to self-organize as well, okay? So, that's good housekeeping, um, the last two patterns that I want to talk about, they are used in conjunction during sprint retrospectives. The first one is Scrum in the Scrum. The second one is Happiness Metric. The idea is, let's stop with this deja vu moment that we have every sprint, right? So, I've, oh, I've seen this problem before. So, the idea is, Scrum in the Scrum, you go, you go about asking one question to your team. What was the biggest barrier? that we have encountered in a sprint, everyone naturally is gonna have a different perspective on it. So you conduct a voting and pick the biggest impediment that you have encountered. And then you establish a root cause analysis to understand why this is happening and what you can do to tackle this impediment, this big barrier or this big problem before the end of the next sprint. So each of these action items are gonna be inside the sprint backlog of the next sprint. And so therefore it has to be tackled, removed before the end of the upcoming sprint. Happiness metric together with Scrum in the Scrum um, are two very powerful patterns. The idea is to conduct a retrospective in order to understand that whenever you conduct action items, whenever you, you execute action items uh, to remove a specific problem, Right, So you're not going to focus on all of the problems that you encounter. You focus on only one, one at a time. The action items that you conduct in the upcoming sprint to remove this big barrier are actually going to happen in order to increase the happiness of team's participants. So uh, people that attend the CSM training with me, they see the way I conduct retrospectives in corporations. Right, I use this, this mix metric and scrum in the scrum so i'm not going to conduct i'm not going to create activities action items to only to remove the barrier per se 
just for the sake of removing the barrier, I'm going to be conducting, I'm going to be actually uh, implementing action items in order to in increase the happiness of my team members. Happiness uh, with their role in the project and happiness uh, with the company itself. All right. So we quantify that. And as you see that these action items go in, being implemented in the sprint after sprint, happiness increases. And in parallel, you see the velocity is going to increase as well. So this proves to your company executives that conducting measures to increase happiness of people also increases productivity. So that's the sole proof that happier people produce more. All right. So stay tuned for more videos and let's see the ground running. Thank you.